What's up, kings and queens, fellow deities, demigods? I'm Angelo, Hollywood filmmaker, uh, most successful screenwriter in the history of the world, recovering hobo. I'm in Hollywood. I uh, figured I'd talk about something I wanted to um, talk about which is how have I changed in the, I guess, three years I've been in LA now? Yeah, three years, hard to believe. So much has changed. Um, I'm seeing how my pants need to be changed. I re didn't realize how dirty they are. I need to wash them tomorrow. So LA has been, you know, so many things. It has such a reputation. Um, I didn't even know it had mountains out here. I just knew the urban environments. I didn't know what the valley was. I didn't know anything. I just assumed it's all concrete and steel. I had no idea really how big it was. You know, think about what movies do I think of LA? Well, uh, first of all, there's a million of them, but I don't really know in my head because a lot of them, they'll shoot in LA, but they're, it's doubling for another city. But whatever. Anyways, we'll get into it. Pre pretty much uh, like 70% of the movies I've seen probably. Um, I've become a lot more resilient, and, and a lot of that was from, you know, living in my car, being homeless, and learning a lot of discipline to, like, get up early, to exercise, to eat right, and that all took a while, and really, uh, I credit, um, a few things, but the Mike O'Hearn meal plan and workout stuff, it, it's not this, like, obnoxious, wild, be-all-you-can-be stuff. I just appreciate that Michael Hearn, he just seems so down to earth and like just a level-headed guy. I don't know him personally, but anyways, he, he's a bodybuilder and actor. He's so funny, man. I saw a clip of him on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. My hair is in a weird part. I'm about to go get a haircut after this. Uh, and he was so freaking funny in it. And that helps me, you know, get sold on something like, oh, he, yeah, I don't know him. Oh, excuse me, it's still farting. Oh, come. okay, I thought it was a weed whacker. It's just a really obnoxious motorbike. Now I lost my train of thought. But anyways, that, that sold me on a lot, and it just helped me clarify years of confusion about, you know, how do I diet? And now I got things kind of dialed in. I, I've been, you know, not sleeping enough, um, probably not eating enough, so, or not digesting. I've been stressed, but like I'm doing well, so I can't complain. <laughs> but um, a lot more resilient. Um, I just feel like so much has come in place for me since uh, I've been to LA. Now, one thing that hasn't come in place that a girl just walked by who um, is my roommate who's an abuser, abusive. I'm serious. She just walked by and dropped off her shoe. Apparently, she leaves her shoes out here. Um, she sexually harassed me twice. Uh, totally not cool. Um, it's disturbing. Uh, and I guess, like, to some people, it sounds funny. Like, it's not funny. It's really sickening. Like, being sexually harassed. Um, I've talked about the story, and there's a whole heap of weird stuff around that. <laughs> like her, her like blind spot and entitlement. Uh, like she, she got annoyed. I, I don't even like complaining because it's like, what's there to complain about? You know, I'm an adult. I gotta get things figured out. So, anyways, yeah, I won't get into the, those stories. But the total denial that it ever happened. Um, I heard her complaining about me, like, Angelo got mad at me, I have to walk on eggshells around him. Yeah, it was after she did a lot of stuff, a lot of screaming, the cops came, ter she terrorized me and everyone else in the apartment and in the building, because the neighbors called the cops, and uh, then she walked out here where I'm on the balcony, just out of nowhere one day, like a month after that she terrorized everyone, said, hey babe, and I, I got so mad I couldn't even finish the sentence, I just said, don't. That's the last thing I've said to her, and I haven't spoken to her since in almost a year now. Anyways, um, I've learned a lot about, you know, just how to, like, interact, deal with people, sort of compromise, but know how to, you know, let people know what you need from them in a way that helps them, too. Um... Because, you know, got to live with people, got to, you know, uh, like in L.A. especially. I mean, it's expensive everywhere around the country. Like housing has become so hyper commodified 
and um, even with a decent salary I make now and you know decent savings that would all be wiped out so quickly if I tried to either get my own place or um, you know just move and even have like a single roommate and, and it would be practically a full-time job to find a place because so many landlords are scummy, so many listings are, you know, scammy. Um, I can't think of a third SC word. <clears throat> but um, that's what I've learned. I was literally looking up stuff at uh, like 3 this morning because I couldn't sleep. What the hell just fell out of the sky? But, uh, you know, like I said, no matter how down I get, like, I'm doing great. As bad as things can be, one of the greatest things for me is writing. The fact that I've been consistently writing every day, I describe it like a plane taking off. No matter how heavy it could be, a 50-ton plane, no matter how heavy things are on me, when I'm writing and pushing forward, it's like I'm becoming more buoyant. And all that weight is just being carried up with me. And I, oh crap, I don't have a watch. I gotta check the time, I don't wanna mess up. Okay, I got time, because I do have an appointment at the hair salon. I don't think they really keep track that carefully, but uh, um, writing has been great. You know, for one thing, finding the film opportunities here and being able to be around like-minded people where I can be myself and you know express myself just as a film lover and filmmaker and video maker and screenwriter even though sometimes I don't you know want to tell people I'm a screenwriter because then everybody wants to you know hear my ideas and then say what they don't think works about them I'm like these are like in their infancy I can't talk about this you know but people want to hear and then you know it, it makes it sound like I'm being difficult or if I try and describe my classes but I can't really because there's no way to describe them shortly it's unlike anything probably most people are used to dealing with with writing um, as I imagine, a lot of writing classes can be, just the ones I'm in, and it's like, it, there's no way to describe them. Um, it sounds like it's one, because everyone has their own conception of what writing is. But um, that's been great. And uh, being able to be around like-minded people, and I've been able to just make so many more, you know, friends here than I ever could in Virginia, because I couldn't really be myself there. I just felt like, even, you know, there were plenty of creatives and stuff, but I'm like, it's so good to be somewhere where people came to work hard, to be themselves, to be their best self. There's been a lot of the most generous helping people here. There's been some of the lowest, scummiest. Um, I don't even want to get it. There's no point in getting into some of that stuff, but yeah, like dealt with stuff that it's not worth talking about because what's the point? I'm not here to just inflict on people, you know, bad stories or I don't even like calling it bad stories like I'll figure out a way through it all um, you know figuring out where to compromise where to put your foot down all that stuff and being able to actually you know go after my dream and live my dream it's great and plus the climate here it's ideal for me it is scary sometimes thinking about like man climate change it's not just a right change in temperature a change in the ocean currents change in the sea levels change in you know the food supply like everything um, so being in LA too it's made me so much more you know just mindful and appreciative of like you know the difference between poverty and wealth of the you know uh, nece the necessity of good transportation options of livable neighborhoods of not having uh, everything be car centric I really turned into like this huge hippie you know uh, you know, the rights of people who are oppressed, um, like all kinds of people, you know, who like have been wronged and, you know, deserve so much better. And it's like seeing the disparity of, you know, how LA supposedly can be and then the way it is. And there's been huge stories in the news about that lately with the city council. I'm like, yeah, the city council, they were just caught saying the things in private that reflect how they've been voting, um, meaning racist, uh, yeah, really racist, um, wanting to police black and brown people's bodies, uh, this stuff. I, I don't even like saying her name, that the council uh, person who's the former president who resigned, 
you could already see she was a bully before that when she was like here holding a hearing on this uh you know referendum on um, whether homeless people would be allowed to like or just people would be allowed to like camp or sleep or whatever within like a certain distance of like certain institutions like schools or whatever and she was such a bully about it and nasty and like you know I, I don't like using that word nasty because it also it comes with the baggage of like you know uh, like only being assigned to certain people so I just say like being a bully being cruel and lecturing and, and saying like, you know what? She literally said like, I don't see people here who look like the people, you know, who are on the street or whatever. I'm like, oh, what do they look like? You know, like, who do they look like to you? Well, it's obvious the way she was talking about, um, you know, I, look, I, I don't even like that. My brain cannot process the racist nonsense she was saying. I don't even like thinking about it. So anyways, good riddance. But that's the thing, like she was voting the way her inner thoughts reflect for years. It's just now she was heard in private because some good Samaritan had, had the forethought to record it. Anyways, I don't even like thinking about that stuff. Um, you know, the fact that there is like so many, there are so many great opportunities here for in, in every way you look. They are improving the transportation a lot. They just opened up the K line, that is awesome. They're going to open up more metro lines. They're extending the purple line uh, to go further west, like down Wilshire. That is great. Wilshire is such a crowded street. It's supposedly the busiest bus route in the country, I think. I forget if that's how I heard it or something like that. Um, bus corridor, whatever. So, you know, a lot of great stuff. And there's a big contrast. And it's like, here's where I came to be myself, you know. Who knows where I'll live someday? I want to live here the rest of my life. You know, sometimes I worry how much, how long, how much longer will, you know, the human race last if we're, you know, polluting and have, you know, such dangers and, and uh, anyways, I don't like thinking too negatively because I'll just spin out, you know, thinking about all the negative stuff. But um, here I realize if I'm, you know, feeling down or whatever, I got to do more to get ahead or to feel better, and it does help. And um, so many years, you know, just living in Virginia in particular, thinking so much of my life was just this empty hole, this pit of nothing, you know, like, why did I go through that? Why did all that happen? And I'm now, I've been experiencing more and more where it's like, it made, not, it makes sense. I don't like putting any words to it. Just, um, I have a lot going for me now. I can deal, I don't know how to say it, it's not like I want to deal with some stuff that's so negative, but, you know, I know I can keep working ahead, I can outwit these problems, not by outthinking them, but by, you know, doing, by going after good, good things in my life. Uh, I know it's pretty vague, but definitely, well, for one thing, became much more interested in, you know, transit getting people around where they don't have to have a car and store a car and pay for it and pay for gas and maintenance and pollute and how great transit can be and how much better it can be. So meaning, you know, metro, bus, light rail, heavy rail, whatever, passenger rail. There's a part of me that just fantasizes like, man, I just want to take a week. I don't really want to spend the money right now, but like, just take a week, take a train somewhere around California or around somewhere the western region of the U.S., and just travel and just enjoy it by myself. Um, there's options, there's plenty of options for that. The California Zephyr, uh, I think it's called. Yeah, I know it's called the Zephyr, but uh, um, that there's different Amtrak options, there's Metrolink, just do something. But I know with hindsight, you know, of having moved to California, when the time's right, I'll know. If it's not right yet, if it's not lining up, no, don't do it, there's no rush. When the time was right to move to California, it clicked. I just knew. Before that, I was like thinking about it, daydreaming about it, daydreaming about it. Even the idea of moving into my car, I'm like, you know, I'd save so much in rent, but how would I use my computer and shower and stuff? I, I thought I would never move into my car, it happened. Probably thought I would never move to California, it happened. Probably thought I'd never go without a car, not only it happened, but I'm so glad. And I was toying with the idea, thinking, oh, someday I'll buy a car, I'll probably buy a Prius. I don't think I'll ever buy a car again. 
I really don't want to buy a car again. I hope I don't buy a car again. Why bother, even if I'm rich? Why bother? Why bother with the storage and maintenance and, you know, uh, I hate dealing with the uh, upkeep and the, you know, schedule for uh, maintenance. So anyways, I'd rather just take that money and just give it to some organization that helps, you know, get people around on buses and stuff or something. So anyways, uh, and just, you know, like, like I said, it, this is a place where I can be so much more of myself than I could in Virginia, where I felt like I was lying to people, like I was hiding who I was to where my body was screaming, like, I'm lying, I'm pretending this other thing. I was a bouncer for several years, but I'm like, I'm realizing, like, I'm a filmmaker, everything I'm doing is saying filmmaker, and yet I'm pretending I'm this thing that I'm not. And eventually it just, I had to split, you know, I had to go one way or the other, and there was no way I was staying a bouncer. So anyways, I have to go get my hair cut. Thanks for watching everyone. Uh, let me know your advice. I'm thinking about, uh, well, I'm not thinking, I will join the LA Tenants Union. That's something I think we need. And I've kind of just it went to the back of my mind for a while, a little bird up in the tree, palm tree, but uh, stuff like that, you know, it's really important. And um, got to do a lot of writing this weekend. So anyways, thanks for watching.